Hi everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and today we are going to be revisiting our friend Jack the Bear from the Artful Quarterly subscription box. There was a comment left underneath the, subs the subscription box video by Yezzy. I was thinking about it in more of a physiological sense and a more scientific sense rather than, uh, than anything else. And uh, the reason for that is that there are subtle differences between male and females in a species. And obviously me being an animal scientist, I am acutely aware of that. I was thinking about it in terms of drawing the differences between the male and female sex of a bear. So let's get to top down view and we can see what we can do for our friend, the very, very cheesed off Jack. So for this little experiment, I have my sketchbook and obviously anything we do is no problema. I have my reference image of Jack, who we shall be creating a super for today. I think I'm going to have to take this bracelet off because we're going to get a lot of jingling and things off the, the desk. Okay. That was a bad idea. Right, okay, so yeah, this is this is what I'm using as my reference image, so I'm just going to pop him off to the side. Uh, in addition to that, because this has come from the Artful Quarterly box, and this was the second box that we were introduced to Jack, I also have the pencil outline of the original bear that came in the subscription box. But not only that, within the magazine, Jamie has done us a sort of tutorial step on Jack the Bear himself and also a little pencil demonstration on how he creates fur textures. So I thought we could maybe try and incorporate this into the drawing because a lot of what he has done with Jack has been digital and we are going to be sticking solely to pencil today because that's my kind of thing. Yeah, so the reason that uh, Jack the Bear will be getting a girlfriend is because in most mammals, there are sometimes subtle and not so subtle physiological differences between the male and the female of a species, and bears are no exception. If I were to recreate a, a male partner for Jack, I would essentially just be redrawing Jack in my style, and to be perfectly honest, though, there's not much fun in that for me. Uh, the female, we shall be altering, but we will be using the same sort of characteristics that Jack has got, but we'll be creating them in a bit more of a female form for this particular bear. There's just a little bit more variation. It's a bit more challenging as well, and it gives me something to explain as I'm going along as well, so yeah. So let's get started on a gradual outline, and I'll explain some of these differences. I'm going to use a mechanical pencil. There was a mechanical pencil that came in the Artful box. I'm not going to lie, I don't know where it is. Like, I just don't know where it is. So this is the one that's in my pencil case, and this is uh, just a cheap one. So the reason that this is incredibly handy for us, this pencil outline, is we can sit that right next so we've actually got a uh, we've got a reference image for our sketch outline which is something I'm not used to having but it's going to prove quite useful to us and I'm going to show you why when we think about a female bear one of the main differences is that their ears look a lot bigger in comparison to their head and it, their ears aren't actually all that much bigger it's the fact that everything else is smaller so it makes them look you know like gives them different proportions basically so with this bear here you can see that Jack basically his head is just like part of his shoulders it just like keeps going on the female bears have much much narrower heads and that's true of a lot of mammalian species as well. They just tend to have like finer features. So our friend Jack here, if Jack was a Jacqueline, we would have a much, much thinner face. So maybe to here. And generally speaking, the neck and the shoulder muscles, because they're not using them for the same things, a lot of mammalian male species use their shoulders and their you know their chest area for fighting especially if they're going head to head so they tend to have really built up chests and shoulders uh, male cattle bulls are another example of that as well they're very very built compared to females and that emphasis is on those muscles those neck muscles and the shoulder muscles bears are no different so madame's shoulders would be somewhere probably around here you know they're not going to keep going out from the top of the head so they do still have shoulders, but they're not huge. 
So there we go, that's the, that's the first, first difference. So when we come to think about their ears as well, their heads are much more rounded, they're not as square and flat as the males. So if we pop those ears in now, and even if we make them roughly the same size as Jack's, then you will see that they will look a lot bigger because our head's smaller. So we still, I think we should also have a hat. The other thing I really want to do is I want to stick to this same colour scheme. So I want to have this blue background and an orange hat. And I was kind of thinking that a berry might be a nice idea for our, for our female. Uh, see, now she looks like she's got a pumpkin or something on top her head. Okay, we'll need to work on the berry, but we can do it. Or maybe it would have a brooch on it or something. Yeah, so we could do that. The male bears, and I had to look this up, and the website that I used to look it up was actually, I think it was like a hunting and fishing guide for Alaska. You know, it's a, it's a leaflet, you know, like information sheet. Uh, again, bears, not really is this such an issue in the UK, but that was, I wanted to have as much knowledge as possible, and I already knew about the shoulders and the heads and the ears and the things. But one of the things that they mentioned is that the muzzle of a female uh, tapers down so it's much longer and narrower than the males, which again is quite an interesting characteristic and you see it in quite a lot of mammals. So in order to show that off, obviously this is a very sort of square on view of Jack, but if we just sort of alter this position of the nose and bring it down slightly, so if we, if we have our nose coming down to like maybe here, and then have the nostrils in somewhere around here. And we can bring this muzzle, you know, because obviously they're not going to see as much of the muzzle, but it's going to be slightly narrower. So we're going to bring it up around here like this. And then we're going to make our eyes slightly bigger. Just that's more for an illustrative effect than anything else. Because um, we could, you know, we could give her some eyelashes if that's what we wanted. Depends how silly we're going to get with this, I'm not entirely sure yet. But if we do that, we can mess about with this muzzle and we want her to have like a quite a smiley face because we want her to be smiling at Jack. So we can play about with that muzzle there. And then we can just start to work that hair in using Jamie's tutorial. So there you go, without too much effort there, if I just take away these parts here, we have got a, a you know, a bear that's looking quite, quite feminine when you see her next to Jack. And that's exactly why I wanted to do this as an exercise. I'm gonna stick Jack on this side just so that I can see his handsome but slightly grumpy face. Now this is a really good example. I don't need to bang on about how much I, uh, how much I think of the Artful box this time round now that they've done a bit of tweaking. But this, these materials that have been provided are a prime example of the fact that this box can suit any level of artist. You've got that there. If you want to try and draw Jack, you've got help there. That's what that's for. If, like me, you're more leaning towards an intermediate artist, I am still using this, although it's not for that sort of base purpose. I am still making use of this. I am still able to use the supplies in the box and trying out new techniques as well is something that is always a good thing. Now for me personally, uh, Photoshop is my worst enemy. I do not get on well with it, I don't like it. I prefer traditional art, but the fact that Jack the Bear and Jamie has talked so much about how much he does digitally, that encourages me to maybe go and try that. So if you haven't thought about getting an Artful subscription and it's something that you want to consider, it doesn't matter what level of artist you are, I would recommend it. I, I genuinely, genuinely would. These magazines now are packed with so much stuff. And even if you're quite a seasoned artist, you will find something useful or inspirational in here, I can guarantee it. And I think at £35 every quarter, it's not a really expensive box. Anyway, now that I've got off my soapbox about that, let's see if we can get um, Madame Bear, let's call her Jill just for simplicity. Let's see if we can get Jill down on this paper here. So trying to keep that head shape nice and round. And then we want our muzzle to come down around here like this. So I need to do something about this berry situation and I'm not entirely sure about what I should be doing with it here. But maybe like it's gonna come down at an angle this way, I think. See, now our ears are all wonky. Righty ho, so now we've got the basic outline sorted out. I have got with me a 5B pencil and just the mechanical pencil that I was using before. So one of the things I want to do is work on the eyes. Uh, when I'm drawing animals in general, it's just a place that I like to start. So I have made our eyes slightly larger. 
we um, yeah there's there's a just a, a reason for that and it's easier to get a little bit of expression so maybe if Jack's over here maybe she's looking at him so maybe we want some pupils over here. I think we maybe just give her a, a couple of eyelashes, maybe hint that she's a girl. Maybe she's batting her eyelashes at Jack. So the next thing that I want to do is I just want to work on these ears and I want to get in some uh, some shading. So I'm just going to put in some darker areas just with the side of this 5B pencil and then we'll work on the texture after that. So we just want to build up some fur and some hair. So we've got a nice hairy ear. <laughs> So then we've got some lighter, we've got like a lighter patch down the side of his face. I'm just going to leave that in there as well. Start adding some of this fur here at the sides. So then we've got this area around our nose as well and that obviously the, the hair here is going to be a lot more subtle. And we want this all to kind of like flow away from the nose. And then we've, we've got all the hair around the eye. Animal hair is quite funny that way. Now we've got a kind of patch around the eye and that kind of gives like the shape of the eyebrow. So I want to keep this quite high and light because the further we bring that brow line down the more pissed off our animal's going to look and obviously we want her to be the opposite of Jack. We want her to be happy. And then we're going to bring this down just like Jack's to where the nose starts. Now I want there to be quite a sort of distinct line here, like an eyebrow, so I'm just going to make sure that I keep that line visible to me and I can darken it as I go along. So most of the hair in this area is going to be straight up and it's a lot shorter and again that's the same with most mammals. If you've got a cat or a dog uh, or even a hamster or a rabbit, then the, you'll notice that the hair that goes up from the, well, what I would call like the bridge of the nose, if you were going to compare it to a human, it's very short and it heads up the way towards the top of the head rather than anywhere else. And it can get a bit fiddly because there's usually a point on most mammals here where the hair starts, you know, where it meets from going up the way and down the way and you get like a sort of whorl. Um, and that can be quite difficult to draw in, but... I'm just going to add in this other eyebrow type area here as well and I say I want to keep them nice and rounded and that's just to help give her a much more soft expression rather than the, the really cheesed off expression that Jack has. Now I'm kind of leaving this area alone here just now because I'm not entirely convinced about the berry situation. So <laughs> I'm just going to work on um, getting some of this hair in, in the surrounding areas, especially around uh, her eyes. I have to go and retrieve my collie. She's outside, just absolutely pouring my rain outside and she's just standing outside in the wet. <laughs> Okay now, so for this nose area, this is probably going to be the area that's going to be most different to Jack. We've made the nose come in at a slightly different angle, but also the muzzle shape between the male and the females is considerably different. I'm just going to use this 5B pencil here. I'm not putting a huge amount of pressure on it, but I just want to darken down this area first. And then I'm going to start to lighten this up because there is going to be this highlight across here and again we, we kind of want it in keeping with Jack's we want it to we want there to be similarities here so that we can determine that yes they're 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 almost a pair now for the nostrils I'm just gonna grab a really really dark pencil and that's a place that I will start with when I'm doing my my doggo draws so I've got I've got an 8b here and we're just gonna get those nostrils in okay now we can continue down on this nose here now here's the fun bit, although this is going to be very pale fur in this muzzle part, this is where we're really changing the expression and this is where I'm putting the emphasis on because one of the things that makes Jack look a little bit annoyed with himself is this sort of deadpan look in his eyes but also this straight mouth and Jamie has deliberately put a really bright highlight there and that's supposed to be the bottom lip so we are going to incorporate that highlight into our bear as well but obviously we are going to change the angle so that she looks happy and that she's smiling at Jack and trying to cheer him up and this is like in my head when I was thinking about this this was one of the things that made me kind of want to do this so when we're doing this this dark area here 
that we can see on Jack's mouth. We want ours to be like a smiley face shape, like this. And then she can have the rest of her little white fur just underneath there. I just want to get this a little bit more even. Maybe she should have been winking at him. <laughs> okay, maybe not, maybe not, maybe not. So just going back to my uh, mechanical pencil here, I just want to sort of pencil in some very light hair lines. And again, on their noses, they tends to sort of, not part in the middle, but there tends to be some sort of divide or parting there, which we're not going to place too much emphasis on because it's not really an integral part of the picture. And I just want to put a little bit of shading under here as well. Um, again, just, uh, just to sort of echo what's going on with Jack here. I think I'm going to darken down her nose. I just need to get this line down the side of the head here. Just make this a bit more interesting. Now remember to leave in that to leave this gap for this paler area which we will work away on. And then we can start putting these the the hairy lines in. <laughs> the hairy lines, my goodness. And you can spend, I mean you can spend ages doing stuff like this. And I really enjoy it, and that's why I enjoy doing dog portraits. This is no different. Uh, however, this is being filmed, so we have to be a little less pernickety and precise about what we're doing, otherwise this video will last about three days, which is no good for anybody. No good for anybody. So we now got to start incorporating this into the rest of the picture. Now this is the point where I want to show you um, the little section that Jamie had done on Jack's fur. So you can see here there's a little paragraph down the side and it's got a bit of an explanation but there's actually a visual step by step into how he does this and if you look closely at him actually drawing Jack you can see how many times he's done this and you can see how he has changed the width of the lines and the concentration of the lines within the drawing so that he can get different thicknesses and lengths of hair as well. Really what I want to do here is I want to get the this rough line basically where the head first stops and the body first starts if that makes sense. Just trying to think about that neckline. The hair is much shorter on the face obviously and I'm keeping these strokes really light just now because I want to get that sort of first texture in and then if I want to make areas darker I can just use the same texture and just go over the same area. So you can see where we're going with this basic fur texture. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to finish off doing this all the way around here, it's nothing exciting and I'll catch you up in just a little minute. Right, we're going to take a look at this um, at this berry now. And I think the easiest thing to do is just to keep it as fluid as possible. Unfortunately, I can't find a lot of reference images of bears wearing... <laughs> wearing oh dear. Anyway, there seems to be a sort of... We need a crease line of some description and I think that's maybe too high up. I call that the cherry stalk. There's a little cherry stalk on top and then we've got this part down here. Okay, I don't know what's wrong with my dogs this morning. They are um, incredibly antsy and I don't know whether it's because of the weather. It is really, really wet here today. Like, it's super wet. It's what I would deem like... Um, like proper Scottish rain. It's just abysmal, absolutely abysmal July, my backside. Here we go. So we're kind of getting to the bottom here now. <laughs> so now I'm going to take my 5B and I want to just start adding in areas of light and shadow. And I'm just going to start in here just because that's where I feel like going. So bearing in mind that these are these are quite light parts here. And we want to make these eyebrows a little bit more prominent. But we also want the hair in here to be slightly darker. Down in here. And then down under here is where things are going to start to get considerably darker. So we've got this hair under here and that's the hair that's going to be a little bit shorter. And again, I'm just going to use the side of my pencil here just to fill in some of this white. OK, 
Okay, so yeah, we want a little bit more texture here. Obviously I'm pressing a lot more lightly now and I'm keeping the lines a lot shorter and a bit tidier. So I'll maybe get some more lines in here. Okay, I'll just get some more shading in around this side of the nose now. Okay, I'm reasonably happy with this for a, a quick drawing. When I say a quick drawing, I mean a YouTube video drawing. I just want to get a little bit more shadow and shading without taking away too much from what we've been doing here. For the background, um, I wanted something that I can cover the area quite quickly with and I have this Karen Dash Neo Colour Aquarelle Crayon. Now these are wax crayons but they're water soluble. So all I've done here is spray a little bit of water in the middle of this palette and I'm just literally rubbing this crayon into it because we're going to need a fair bit of pigment. I do have a bit of an area to cover and I can always make up more, that's not a problem. And uh, the idea behind this is we just use it like we would use watercolour paint. So I'm using a number eight round. Uh, this is a brush I'm really comfortable with and uh, I'm just going to start putting that on the paper. Now bearing in mind my sketchbook, it's not really designed to take watercolour. We have tested out before when we did the actual test on it. We did test out to see if it would take water soluble media and it does to an extent. So I'm not expecting a really nice tight, you know, flawless wash here. Had I been on other paper, I may have used a, like more of a wash technique, you know, and had the paper wet beforehand. But I do kind of enjoy having some of the brush texture. It's kind of nice. Okay, so now that our blue is nice and dry, I have picked out a selection of orange coloured pencils, uh, orange stroke going into red, and we're going to use these for the berry. So the first thing we want to do is get a base coat of our lightest colour down, in which case this is, it's all polychromos pencils I'm using, that tends to be my go-to for coloured pencils, and this is dark cadmium orange. So we're going to get that down first over the entire area that we intend to make orange and it doesn't matter if it's that uneven as long as you use a light pressure and you just get that base coverage down. So this side is naturally going to be darker um, because we've established that the light source seems to be coming from over here somewhere. This is going to be almost sort of like a band round here if you like. And then I'm going to use this darkest colour, what are we on now? Uh, scarlet red. And we're just going to put in some creases. I mean this is obviously a crease here but it's going down in. And then we can start building all this up in the grand scheme of things. We really want it to pop out and again we're not going to get the same sort of flat colour as Jack's got here because this has been done digitally. But it doesn't mean that we can't have a real good go at it. Now this is going to be, this is on like the, where the light source is coming from side but it's in behind the ear. So that is up to you how you want to interpret that. I would personally go for a mid-tone in where the hat meets the bear and then just maybe try and get a bit of a sense of curvature there and then I would just add in this lightest colour, go over it with the lightest colour. Here we are, so just build, kind of building this colour up now, just very slowly building that up. Now there are some areas I'm avoiding, I want to get a little bit of um, dimension. I have got a graphite mark there, I had my grubby fingers in it but do you know what, sketchbook, that's okay. Now I'm going to use my graphite pencil here just to mark in some of the lines on the berry and again that's just really to coincide with what what Jack looks like and Jack has little lines on his hat as well so. Okay so we want to work on our eyes now and uh, they are kind of like a really pale browny colour ranging through to a really dark brown colour when it comes to bears but I think we should give her something a little bit more exotic. So I'm starting out with a pencil that's quite near the colour that Jack's eyes are. Giving her some nice brown eyes. <laughs> and what I want to do now is just take my black pencil and I'm going to accentuate a little bit around her eyes. I want to kind of give her like almost like an eyeliner look because she is a pretty bear after all. We'll do the same on the other side as well. This is kind of fun, I'm not going to lie. 
and we'll get some hairs in there. Oh yeah. Now the other thing that I want to do is I want to take this same colour that I've used for our eyes and I'm just going to give her a dusting of this down her nose. Like this. Again, just using a really light hand. I just want a hint of colour here to, to sort of separate out this nose area. Or should I say this kind of like muzzle area from the rest of the face. So a little bit more in here and a wee bit more under there. Oh yeah. So just a tiny hint of colour. Tiny, tiny hint of colour. Doesn't need to be too much. And then using this black here. I can just add in a little bit more on her nose. And again, I'm not, I'm just kind of like, what's the word I'm looking for? Accentuating, I'm not really trying to make anything look any better than, than what it is. Now I've got this dark sepia, and if I show you on this piece of paper here, it is quite a, it's what's quite an odd colour, it's a greyish blackish brown and it just happens to be ideal for bears. <laughs> I just want to add this in on again where this muzzle part is and it's just to give a little bit of definition there <clears throat> and split that muzzle off. Again we'll make this a little bit darker in our, in our nose there. I want to add a line in where the berry is, we do need some sort of anchor point there so that we know that it's sitting on her head, it's not part of her head. I think she's complete. What do we think everyone? Put my bracelet back on now. <laughs> Okay, so this has been immense fun. Like, I have had so much fun doing this just because it's something different. I would love to know your thoughts on this and uh, whether you think that Cecilia is going to be a suitable mate for our friend Jack the Bear and whether or not she's going to be able to cheer him up. So, uh, yeah, I want to thank you very much for watching and I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. I certainly have. I've had a great time today and we'll see you back in the cave real soon for another video. Stay safe, everyone, and bye for now. Okay.